Hey guys, welcome back. So spring's right around the corner and we have St. Bridget's Day and in bulk for those of you still using the wheel calendar coming up literally this weekend. So I wanted to take the time to put this message on blast and talk about something I'm sure everyone's going to be talking about here in a bit. And that is sexual rights and more importantly, the importance of consent around these rights. So now, before anybody jumps on this, bashes what I'm about to say, no, I'm not a hater. I fully support the use of sexual rights. I am sex positive, And I certainly believe that it, you have a right to practice whatever it is you're going to practice. That being said, if you're practicing it with somebody who is not able or willing to give their consent, then you need to take a step back and take a look at what you actually believe. So this is actually brought on by a post that I read, or a tweet actually, a tweet that I read a few days ago posted by Suzanne Ann Lawless, and I'll link to her feed down here below, uh, talking about an update she was about to make to a blog that she had written some time ago uh, chronicling her history of abuse in the pagan community. And she's gotten a lot of hate for this. So if you're going to hate on her, don't, don't just, just fucking don't. And I think her blog and the countless others that are out there now. So I've seen a few more pop up since then in solidarity really point out a problem in the community that we've been having for quite a while and that nobody's really talking about. That problem is that while we ourselves, earth worshippers and pagans of all colors and creeds, we are, by our nature, very alternative. We are very sex positive people and many people, especially in the last 50 or so years, have been reclaiming uh, the ability to perform sexual rights and getting rid of the stigma that surrounds these rights. And this has unfortunately led a huge like swath of these predators right into our midst. And it's important for us as workers with the sacred divine, the masculine and the feminine to act as guardians against this sort of behavior. So I'm not talking about, you know, your friend who's decided that she's going to practice sex magic on the side and you need to give her a talk. No, this is for those folks out there who back up. Okay. So I know that there are groups out there that practice sexual magic as a mandatory part of their practice. And I get that, that some of these groups, it's a key component to their, their doctrine and their practice. While that's all well and good, mandatory sex is problematic. And while I can see the need for it to be explored, especially in certain circles, the things that it should not include are forcibly pairing somebody with someone else during a rite against their will and forcing them into a sexual act. This is any kind of sexual act, whether it's just basic fondling or actual Congress, forcing someone into a situation that they do not willingly comply with, for one, is just wrong. Morally, legally, fucking wrong. That makes you an accessory to rape and makes everything that's happening rape. There's no two ways about it. There's nothing sacred about rape. And secondly, and this is completely tertiary, but it completely fucks up everything that you're trying to do with the actual red itself. And I know that we in the modern culture have changed our perspectives on sex and we enjoy more casual sex. We enjoy sex with several partners. There's nothing overly romanticized about it. But in these rites and in the union of the masculine and the feminine, 
we are finding some of the most sacred and intimate kinds of magic that can be performed by us mortals. This is a key part of who we are as physical beings. And to take that and warp it with the sort of destructive power that comes from forcing somebody into something that they do not comply with is really bad for the energy. It's really bad for the person. It's really bad for everybody involved. And I'm not one to necessarily say that I believe in karma. That's an Eastern concept and I don't really follow that. And I'm certainly not one that holds to the threefold law or even the read. I'm not Wiccan and I've not been for quite some time. But there is an inevitable law of reality that horrible things that you do have a tendency to come back to you. This is the as above, so below, as within, so without. You're naturally going to draw this sort of bullshit to you if this is the sort of thing that you're drawing down for other people. And this is not just limited to those people who are facilitating <laughs> the spaces where these things are happening. These are also for everybody who is a bystander. And for somebody who may not be a permanent part of a group, say you're at a retreat or you're at a convention. I know we got PantheaCon coming up soon too. If you're just a bystander watching a predator take someone from an obvious state that they cannot give their consent, and you're allowing them that to happen and them to do that in front of you. You are every bit as much an accessory to what is happening as the person who's actually doing this. To the people who are actually facilitating the spaces and making these things possible. So if you see some fucked up shit, say something. Intervene. It doesn't... And even if it turns out being nothing or it's silly or these two people have, you know a long-term bonded partnership and say they they plan this out well ahead of time and this is something that they're you know well in advance expecting to do then no harm no foul but you could potentially stop something terrible from happening both to this person and to our community so if you see something stupid do not be afraid to intervene don't be afraid to make yourself any part of stopping what's happening. So that being said, ooh, we lost focus here for a sec. There we go. So that being said, if you are practicing sexual magics, especially in the coming season, here are some things that are yeses. One, do not over imbibe. Okay. The literally once you're drunk or you're on an intoxicating substance of any kind, legal or or not otherwise, like these things cannot allow you the mental faculty to give your consent. If you're planning on engaging in a sexual right, abstain from these things. If not entirely, just don't overindulge. A couple of sips of say like wine from a, a a chalice or something like that's fine but after you've had three or four glasses that's probably not the best time to be doing this shit again even if you are planning to consent and you're planning these things way ahead of time getting drunk before you do this not only looks really really bad and may cause someone like me to step in and say hey actually this is fucked up and you need to stop and leave them alone and force everybody in the situation to be embarrassed. But it also takes away your ability that if you decide in a moment that you need to withdraw your consent for any reason, you'll be able to do so. Those people who are partnering with others, don't force alcohol down people's throats. Stop preying on innocent people. Look, it's not that we don't care about you or welcome you, or want you to be a part of our group. There are some people that legitimately don't want to bone you. And that's a you problem. So 
if you're coming to these things expecting to be able to get laid and like all this is going to be everywhere and this is going to be a massive orgy, Bacchanal style, like you're in the wrong place. Okay, there are places for that. There are spaces for that. There are safe groups that facilitate those kinds of things. Go there. Go through the vetting process to get in there. Do not bring it into our pagan spaces. Do not bring it into our holy temples. Don't bring it into our hospitality rooms. Don't bring it into our rituals. There are other places for that. If you are planning a situation in the coming season that involves group sex, more power to you. I'm totally all right with that. I have no problems with orgies. I've got no problems with people who are practicing polyamory. I even don't have a problem necessarily with polygamy, so long as it's not a thinly veiled facade to hide child brides. Like, that's where it gets fucked up. If you're going to do whatever you want to with your group, that's fine. But the minute someone withdraws their consent, you leave them the hell alone. Just leave it alone. They choose not to participate. Again, this is not a problem. Okay? You let them go. Just stop. If this completely ruins your sex right, then you need to plan something else. Okay? Like... And for those people who are expanding these ideas of sex right to include non-sexual deities or over-fetishized deities, and I'm saying this to you people out there, the Morrigan is not a sex goddess. <laughs> not a sex goddess. You need to think again about your deities and how you look at them and being in the right relationship with them, as my friend Laura would say. <clears throat> because if your desire to be engaged in this sort of right completely disconnects from a core belief or a path that you are currently following, then maybe you're on the wrong path. Or maybe you have a legitimate problem with sex and you need to seek out a professional. And I guess that comes around to my very last point that I want to make is that if you are struggling with any part of this message, whether you are upset at the idea of having something you're planning being thwarted you have problems being rejected by people in the moment, or you find yourself under an assault or an attack, this is not necessarily your fault. You need to seek professional help. And if you're ever in a situation where you're uncomfortable, please seek out an ally, okay? You don't have to consent to something that you don't want to do. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel forced or manipulated. You don't have to feel like this is your duty and your responsibility. Especially we as women, we are not just vessels for alchemy. We are not just sheaths for men to rest themselves within. We are not just a body that's used to channel a goddess. We are not just creative power. We are so much more than that and we deserve that kind of respect. And so if you are being invited to or coerced, or if you've even been a part of a long time group and you're finding yourself in a situation that you just don't feel comfortable with the practices of this group in relation to sexual magic, please speak out, ask for help, come to people like me. We will do what we can to support you and get you out of that toxic environment. And so all of that being said, I don't even know what else to add to it. Just practice safe sex this season. Leave people alone that want to be left alone. Totally engage with people who are willing and consentful. Don't overindulge yourself in intoxicating substances if you're going to do this. And as always, seek, seek a secondary opinion. If something sounds like it's a bad idea, it's probably a bad idea. But feel free to ask a friend. Um... Me, on the other hand, I don't have any sort of plans for any of that this season. I'm just hoping to sit back and enjoy the thawing, the coming of spring, and all the new creation that that entails. So thank you for coming with me on this wild, wild ride through my brain again. If you liked what you heard today, please click subscribe and definitely turn on notifications if you're interested in getting more of this. As for those of you on my Patreon play page, please feel free to become a supporter. 
I'll be putting up some content here soon for members only, but there are certainly other perks available to you at different levels here at the different tiers. And follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram. All you got to do is look for Madam Leandra. I'm literally the only one on there. So thanks you, thank you again for all your support. And until next time, stay cool.